Hi guys and welcome back. In today's video we're going to finish off painting this more realistic looking rooster, cockerel, chicken, whatever you call it. You'll remember this from the Karen Ash Neo Art Water Soluble Wax Crayon review. Well, not review, it was just one colour I was showing you all. And that is on my channel. So, let's get started. So, all of this, as you know, was pre-sketched off camera using reference, which is why it looks better than my other video on my channel called No Reference Chicken. So, I'm using my Schmink Academy gouache from my um, ice cube tray and this has been it's a few, getting on for two weeks old now in the tray and I keep it in a ziplock bag and I put some water into it to keep it uh, nice and moist And I have a pipette here that I keep filling up with clean water and I always have that because then when my paint water is dirty it won't matter for keeping my paint moist. Let's add a few drops. And damp the paintbrush. So I really do like using gouache, it's lovely and creamy, it's opaque so it covers, you can put it on top of each other really and it will cover. You can use it in um, combination with watercolour for uh, different dimensions and I'm just doing layers here starting off with quite a thin layer so I just add more water to spread it out and when it's dry we then build up the layers. I try not to keep adding my wet paintbrush to the paint otherwise it will keep diluting it um, you should have a palette, I should, but I, uh, when I'm spontaneous I tend not to bother. I sometimes will use the bag or the chopping board I use, but, um, you know, I'm pretty bad at doing that. Because I don't really need to mix my colours, I'm just using them straight.
but a palette will give you the ability to make a better consistency. I think this was red, but I'm going to add it in as the fur, the feathers. I think some black from something else has gone onto it. I mean, this sketchbook has gone through so much. It's been a lot of fun, this sketchbook, I have to say. Well done to Arteza for creating it. So then I'm just going back into the yellow ochre and some black and just adding in bits of different tones. This will be as realistic as it's, as it's going to get with me. I, I'm not a realism artist. <laughs> I don't find it fun to do realism. We'll just rinse the brush now. And a big tip, never ever leave your paintbrushes stood in water, even if you're using acrylic paint. Really, really thoroughly wash them and then leave them lying flat or suspended if you can, like that, down, suspended, because otherwise the water will go into the ferrule, which is the, the head of the brush and up to here. And eventually, if it's stood in water overnight, it expands the wooden handle and all the paint cracks off. And you're probably thinking, how does she know all that? Well, it's from experience. And a future video will show you exactly what happens to a paintbrush when you leave it stood in water overnight. Never paint when you're tired, is my advice. So, we're now going to be adding some white. Okay, to add it while it's still wet, the paint, because what you, it, it, well, what you, I do, or you can do if you like, is it's a blending technique. So, it will blend into each other and you get a nice, kind of gradient blended effect. You can add a bit more water to help with the blending. And then I go back to the yellow ochre. And it's just a question of going back and forth with the technique. And there is no right or wrong way for painting. There will be a lot of fine art channels, I'm sure, out there. And they are quite keen on telling you what's right and what's wrong. But on my channel, I am not into right and wrong ways of painting. 
and you hold your paintbrush, your pen, your pencil, however you like, whatever is comfortable for you. And it's how you get the job done. At the end of the day, it is your artwork. So we just carry on doing that. Probably let it dry a little bit more. I do like building up colours, I have to say. The, the texture of gouache. It, um, depending on the brand, for instance, if you use the Arteza gouache, it has the effect of um, an acrylic because the more you put on, it will dry thick, if that makes sense, and you'll feel the texture. Whereas with this Shrink Academy, however much you put on, really, you might get a little bit of texture, but hardly any. It will dry flat because technically gouache does dry flat and matte. And that rhymes, flat and that. So we'll do a bit more white now. You're getting lots of kind of grey tones. Because for chickens they do, it's kind of like layered feathers that they have. And the trick also is to know when to stop. And I'm very guilty of that because sometimes if you don't know when to stop, you can ruin your painting. And nobody wants that. And I'm just going to do some more yellow ochre. I'm going to do the beak now. And I'm just using a, it's the Royal and Lanical, and it is a number three round, I think. Yeah, well, it's definitely a round. I don't know what they call it, but it's a number three. And we add some more white places here. Let's kind of move the water a minute to do here. And I just like to dab now, just dabbing the white. Because it still wets this painting. But a lot of the chickens, they do have the, as I've said, the white kind of fur, feathers peeking through. And we'll get a little bit more yellow ochre. And we'll go around the eye. Clean the brush and we'll get just a little bit of the yellow. And we'll do the in of the eye. And there we have it. This is where I'm going to leave it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it informative and hopefully helpful. I hope it will inspire you 
to uh, when you're painting your chickens. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye! Oh! <laughs>